everybody. Welcome back to the weekly coaching recap. This is where I just share with you some of the highlights that came out of the open coaching and mentorship call that I host in the community I run called Misfit to Maverick. It's an incredible base camp for coaches who are looking for some support, some ideas, some ways to get into action um, in your coaching practice in a way that hopefully feels a little bit more fun and spacious and aligned to who you are and how you like to work. Um, so out of this call, there were a couple of things that I just wanted to share with you with hopes that they help you on your journey. The first, um, if you are hosting a workshop, um, if you're, you know, facilitating a conversation, you know, between a group of people, even if it's just two in the room up to who knows how many, um, here are some tips because one of the coaches on the call was hosting a workshop for the very first time and was like, how do I use Zoom? Do I do breakout rooms? How do I prepare for this? Here were some of the suggestions that I had to offer. I have been facilitating group calls for years. Uh, before I was a coach, I was a teacher. So I've kind of been thinking about instructional design, how to like reach everybody in a group space for a long while. I'm actually currently enrolled in a course around just developing really effective facilitation um, practices when you're when you're facilitating online groups. And um, some some initial things to keep in mind. One, when you think about like the time you're spending with a group. So let's say you're doing a 60 minute conversation or workshop. Think about it kind of like an arc. And in the first part of your conversation, you want to establish connection between people in the room. So if you've likely been on Zoom calls and you know what it's like to just be in a space and we uh, we kind of check out if we're not engaged. Um, as awesome as Zoom can be, it can also be really hard just like really connecting with others in the space. So use those first few minutes, invite people to participate, invite people to share their names, um, put a very like low risk question on the table. You know, what's something you're celebrating? What's a piece of good news you've recently heard? What's your favorite song lately? Like what it just invites people to participate from the very beginning. It kind of like cracks that seal, which is really cool. So start with something like that. Share why you're why you've brought people together. And then I like to as quickly as possible kind of like give other people the opportunity to speak. Now, if I'm teaching a specific topic, I might be speaking more. You know, I'm, I'm leading a conversation. I'm teaching an idea. But even when I am in more of like a teacher space with my workshops, I'm always trying to keep in mind this idea of having a state change. A state change means that every five to seven minutes, you're like switching things up in some way. It keeps things dynamic. It keeps things interesting. So things like asking people to share something in the chat or to use an emoji or to jump on over to a jam board and share their insights or to get together in a little breakout room, having those little moments is a very effective way of keeping people tuned in and engaged. So once you've kind of like done your intros, people are warmed up, you've, you're creating a sense of safety in the space, you enter kind of into the, the bulk of your workshop. And if you're new to this and you just have like, let's say you've just brought some people together. In this case, the coach was bringing together people to talk about stress in the workplace. All you really have to do is seed the conversation question just to say, so, all right, cool. Like, thanks so much for being here. Here's why I'm doing this. Thank you for being here. So what is the biggest source of stress for all of you? Who's willing is who's willing to start? And that idea really was insightful for people on this coaching call this week of like, oh, like you don't have to do as much as you think. Whatever topic it is that you're interested in that you've gathered people around, just ask them what's going on with them and they will start talking. And before you know it, 30 minutes will pass and you'll be in the last 10 minutes of the call when, again, you're kind of at the end of this arc and you really, really want to wrap things up, ask people their biggest insights. What have they learned? Um, another tip that uh, was shared in the room is like get feedback as much as possible. Get feedback from the very beginning. Even if it's just a little slip of paper, if you're seeing people in person, if it's a digital, just Google form. What did you think? What worked? What didn't work? Why did you choose to come today? What could have been done better? Are there any other topics you'd like to talk about? Like, can I keep you updated on future workshops? Like, have that ready to go always because it's just feedback is invaluable. I cannot overstate how important it is to get people to reflect back to you their experience of your coaching. Um, 
because it just takes a lot of pressure off of you having to describe what it is that you do. Ask people what you did. <laughs> How, what did they experience in the room? And it's just really amazing, amazing information to have. Um, what, what else maybe came from that one question? There was a lot there. Ask low risk questions. It's a way of just kind of getting things started in the room. Um, oh, this is one too. When you are hosting a workshop and just a coaching session in general, one thing that I learned that I really wanted to practice very early on is don't be afraid of silence. You know, if if you're in a Zoom room or you're in a real room and let's say there's three or four, two people that have decided to join you for that thing you're doing and you say, so let's talk about stress. What's like the biggest source of stress for you at work? And then wait. Just wait. Don't be afraid to let there be some space and some silence because it, we think that silence means nothing is happening. And so we tend to be like, I got to fill it. Like I have to fill all the space with words or nothing's happening. Well, guess what? A lot is happening when things are silent. People are thinking, they're waiting. They're maybe thinking, oh, should I go first? I don't know. Maybe they're going to go first. What would I say? And so it's just helpful to like practice allowing for silence when you ask a question in a room. Listen, if a minute passes and literally you're like, okay, no one's going to say anything here then you can say, well, I'll start. Or you know what? Don't worry about sharing in the room. Let's post it in the chat. Like maybe that feels a little bit safer and more comfortable. So don't be afraid of silence. That is one of the post-its on the Jamboard. Um, ask low risk questions. Don't be afraid to sit in silence. Uh, oh, this is one. So in Misfit to Maverick, um, at the beginning of April, we like to talk about books that we're reading. And one of the books that we're going to be reading soon, and I thought I had it here. Yeah. Coming up in April, we are going to be having just a book club conversation about Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. This is an incredible book because what it does is it gives you permission to be inspired by the work that other people are doing. Um, I... I've, I've been using this phrase in Misfits and Maverick, like steal like a maverick. Now, I recognize that the word steal can feel edgy. It's really about how you define it. It doesn't mean copy. It doesn't mean poach it. It doesn't mean pretend someone something someone made is actually yours. What it means is don't be afraid to look at models of things that you really like and create your own version of it. Um, uh, another... Uh, book recently read The Antidote to Happiness by Oliver Berkman. I'm pretty sure it was that book. He said, you know, originality follows unoriginality. You know, don't, if there are systems in place, if you see someone, let's say, who's running a particular coaching experience in a way that you're like, I'd like to try it. Like, I'd love to try and do, someone shared an idea where they're doing a two session coaching offer. And they said, yeah, you know, one session usually, usually isn't enough. So I'm going to do a two session coaching offer. That's awesome. You like that idea? Go try it. If you're inspired to try that out, because guess what? Your two session coaching experience is going to be totally different than what that person's two session coaching experience is going to be because you're different coaches. You all have your own unique special sauce. You have all your own, you all have your own strengths and values and skills and experience that you bring into your work. So, so if you, if you see coaching containers or experiences that you feel super inspired by, I'm of like, allow that to maybe inform what your next coaching project is going to be um, because that's how it works. And again, we're reading this in Mr. to Maverick. If you end up joining us before April, I think 7th is our conversation about it. You can read along and connect with us to talk about what you learned from the book. Um, anything else? I have one, like I try and keep these under 10 minutes. Uh, the last thing that came up that a couple of people posted was this idea of a mastermind. So just to, just to kind of put on the table, the so the guy who is leading this workshop, he's like, what I really want to do is I want everybody to support each other in the struggles that they're having. Um, and I was like, well, that's what a mastermind is. A mastermind is when everybody brings their best stuff into the room in service of each individual. So I have always thought about it as like the Ghostbusters crossing their streams. So it's like everyone almost has like an equal mental share in the space. It is literally putting multiple minds together to help 
solve a problem, brainstorm, you know, whatever role that, that the group is going to play for each particular member in a moment. Um, I have actually taken classes on how to run masterminds. I run coaching masterminds where I bring coaches together. But what's really cool about masterminds, what makes them different than, let's say, small group coaching programs, is that a mastermind is inherently about everybody sharing their wisdom in the room. They function well. There's a lot of like um, strategy around how you structure them, around timing things, around setting intentions and agreements. So it's not, there's more to it than just the general idea, but um, it is very likely depending on the strengths that you have and how you like to run your coaching. It's possible that running masterminds is something that could feel very natural to you. Um, and it's different than small group coaching. Small group coaching, each person in the room is looking to you likely for the support, the coaching, the mentorship, masterminding, you are facilitating a, 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 a group experience where everybody is contributing to everybody else. So that just having that conversation generally seemed to be really helpful for the coaches in the room the other day. So wanted to share it with you. All right, everybody, I've reached the 11 minute mark. Oh, Thanks so much for being here. If you're watching on YouTube or as part of my email community, please share your comments down below. Which idea maybe landed with you? Is there something you would like to steal from some of this and maybe use in your own coaching practice? If you're a member of Misfit to Maverick, again, bring all your questions into the room. Don't sit on your ask. Uh, happy to keep workshopping any of these ideas with you directly. And if you're not in Misfit to Maverick, but you'd like to be, the link is down below. We'd love to have you join us over there so that you can be on the next coaching call to get your question answered. Hope to see you then. Bye, everybody.